All right, today we're learning about symbiotic, symbiotic relationships. And the word symbiosis literally means, it comes from the Greek word living together. And bio, we know that means to live, and sim means together. Um, the term used to describe ecological relationships between organisms and other different species that they come in contact with. So two things living together with a relationship. Um, if one of the symbiotic organisms is much bigger than the other one, it's uh, referred to as the host. And there are four main categories of symbiotic relationships, and those are mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, and predator-prey relationships, and we'll look at those in, to a deeper aspect. Mutualism is when both the organisms that are in the relationship benefit from one another. And an example would be the water buffalo and the ox pecker. And I have a video clip for you to watch. It shows this relationship. Ox peckers and egrets hitch a ride across the bay. Their transportation comes stocked with a buffet of ticks, flies, and flecks of dry skin. Their four-legged conveyances provide a perch where they can take a drink. Who can tell me how the ox pecker benefits from this relationship with the water buffalo? So the ox pecker is the little bird here, and what does it get out of the relationship with the water buffalo? It gets to eat the water buffalo. Yeah, it gets a free meal from the water buffalo or anything. It gets a ride. Yep, it gets a free ride. It doesn't have to expend any energy by flying anywhere to ride right on the buffalo. And how does the water buffalo uh, benefit from the relationship? He gets the bugs cleaned off of them? Yep, he gets a free cleaning by the bird. All right, I don't have a video clip for this one, but just from the picture, what do you think, uh, the, how does the flower benefit from this relationship with the bee? It gets to spread its pollen. That's right. The bee will rub around on the flower and it'll spread the pollen so they can germinate. And how does the bee benefit from the relationship? Mm -hmm. Yep, it takes the pollen back to its hive and it makes honey and food for the colony. Commensalism is when one organism benefits from the other without harming or helping the other in any significant way. And so, here's an example of commensalism. We have the clownfish and the sea anemone. Which one of these organisms do you think benefits from the other, and why do you think so? The clownfish is clean. Okay, and any other reason why you think the clownfish would benefit from the sea anemone? It lives there. Yep, it has a house, and what would it, what would the anemone do for it? it from predators and since the anemone is, has a whole bunch of stinging cells other fish don't have a coating like the anemones do. Anemones could stay or the clownfish 
has a coating on it, and it stays inside of the anemone without being stung. Whereas other fish, they don't have that special coating, so they'll get stung by it whenever they come by. All right, in this big thing is a mussel, and these little guys are limpets, or they're barnacles. So which one of these organisms is benefited? up right up on the muscle and they get a place to live and probably when the, whenever the muscle eats it brings in food and they get the little scraps that are left off from it. So the muscle isn't really benefiting from this relationship at all. It just has a heavy load on its back. From the Parasitism is one symbiotic orga organism called a parasite in this case benefits at the expense of the host and often the parasite makes the host ill or it makes it die completely. It causes harm to the host. A video on this one. Under this layer of vegetation, a shade-loving snail has been invaded by worms. These parasites take over the snail's brain and push into his tentacles, transforming them into swollen, colorful, pulsating targets. At dawn, the snail leaves the protection of the vegetation, climbing toward danger. Out in the open, in the hot and dry sun, the snail is exposed and vulnerable. The pulsating tentacles mimic a maggot, the perfect meal for the parasite's next host. A bird. The snail will likely survive this attack, but more parasites are growing inside its body and will move into its regenerated tentacles. The worms are ingested by the bird and begin to reproduce. The bird spreads thousands of parasite eggs throughout the forest to infect more snails. <laughs> 